It was so much easier to make friends when you're a kid, right? I remember when I was six, Craig moved in next door. He was six. We were both just like, oh, age and proximity. That's all we need. Best friends for life. Some guy my age moves in next door to me now. I'm like, if this guy talks to me, I will be furious. <laughs> it's so easy to hang out when you're a kid. You just invite him over to play. You don't even have to be specific. He always comes over, we always have a great time, and we're always mad to be called for dinner. Do you remember liking life that much? <laughs> that you're annoyed about dinner? <laughs> always asking to be excused, please, can I go back to my life? <laughs> How much eating do we have to do in this house? <laughs> Kids hate meals and bedtime. That's all I have now. Right? I call those the big two. <laughs> and if I ever do hang out with another male friend now, it's never playful anymore. It's always like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. You want to get together and eat? <laughs> we could, like, talk and eat. Best case scenario, there's a big game on TV. We don't even, we don't even have to speak. We can just watch other men playing. They're playing well, I love that. <laughs> Don't you love it when our favorite men play well? <laughs> they always play better when they play together, huh? <laughs> that play was unbelievable, let's touch hands. <laughs> that was so nice. <laughs> Maybe after this we could play. Yeah, no, you're right, we ate a lot. <laughs> Sleep would be incredible, you're always right. You're my best friend. I'll see you again in two years. <laughs> Sometimes I don't think we give kids enough credit for how traumatic grade school is. Remember sixth grade, phys ed, run a seven minute mile in street clothes? and then just straight to math. <sighs> Shouldn't have worn hiking boots today. <laughs> Smells like a locker room in here. You kids ready to learn about parabolas? My heart rate is parabolic. Recess is right after lunch because that's how digestion works. Yeah. Yeah, now that you've had spaghetti with milk. <laughs> seems like a good time to go run around in a parking lot. <laughs> they all puked again. Good thing we have our one janitor. I'd live one day on a grade school schedule, it would be the worst day of my adult life. <laughs> Starting the day at 6 a.m., standing on a street corner <laughs> in the rain, <laughs> waiting on a bus with no seat belts or schedule, <laughs> jostles you to homeroom. That's your coffee, is the jostle. Homeroom, you're not allowed to speak, no phones, no music, no gum. Do I have any human rights? No speaking. Now pledge your loyalty to your country. Go on, pledge how much you love America. I'm seven. And admit that there's a God. Admit that there's one God. Go ahead. My parents are agnostic. <laughs> well, I won't tell them. Go ahead, admit that there's one God, and you can say it quiet. All right, you're free to go to first period U.S. history as taught by the JV football coach.
Enjoy his unique perspective. <laughs> a lot of hot takes on the Constitution. A lot of gun stuff in the pop quiz. <laughs> Old Coach Hines. Coach Hines, he would time you for getting water? Kids stand in line and he would go, one, two, three, time. That's all the water you get as a child. It's a fast three seconds. I think kids are going through school dehydrated. If he liked you, he'd go, one, two, three, and time. That's if he liked you. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had spent more time learning. Uh, I wish I had. I wish I had learned more in science class because now I really like the science headlines. I saw that James Webb Telescope came out, and like Hubble Telescope is old news now. You know, Hubble Telescope is a piece of crap compared to James Webb. <laughs> And as soon as they came out with the first images, there was a headline that said, universe bigger than previously thought. <laughs> and I feel like we could have seen that coming. <laughs> I'll be more impressed when there's a new telescope and they're like, we overshot it. <laughs> it's pretty reasonably sized. We, we feel bad about our last estimates. I like the science studies because I feel like half of scientists are trying to save the world with climate change, cure cancer, and the other half of scientists are like, I wonder if orangutans can play pickleball. <laughs> no, they can't. How about bonobos? No. They're kind of playing soccer though. Let's publish it. <laughs> But it always made me wonder about primatologists, monkey scientists, like smartest in your class, high school, smartest in college, best in your PhD program, and then the rest of your career, you're like, bongo, no biting. <laughs> Don't you dare pull the fire alarm, Bubbles. No Bubbles. No, uh, Bubbles. I love you too. I love you too, Bubbles. <laughs> apparently, uh, apparently they struggled to figure out why depression evolved in humans because uh, it just didn't make sense to them. And then they figured it out. A study shows that sad people are better at predicting future outcomes. <laughs> so if you feel bad, you're correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. You sure are. But don't let that make you feel good because happy people delusional about the future. So if you're happy and that makes you feel bad, good, you just got a little smarter. <laughs> I guarantee it was a depressed person that was the first person to figure out to play dead for a bear. All his optimistic friends are climbing trees. We can make it. He's like, I'm just gonna let him take me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, guys. I'll take this one for the team. Go ahead, bear. Just sniffs at him and goes and kills all his friends. and depression passes on to the next generation. <laughs> like, how'd you think to play dead for a bear? I was just being myself. <laughs>